Hey YouTube, Matt back from uh, hibernation with another project video. Sorry about how long it's been, but uh, fall's tough with kids' sports and vacations and stuff. There's just not enough hours in the day. But it is woodworkers fighting cancer time again, which is something I always like to participate in if I can, because it is for a really good cause, and it's usually a pretty good project, like this year's. This is a bookcase, probably, uh, that is designed to look like a castle, complete with a little drawbridge and passageways for your archers or whoever you happen to like to play with. Great set of plans, including a cut list, is available over at the Wood Whisperer site, so check that out if you want to build along. And it's really a pretty simple project, especially considering how cool it looks when it's done. So let's get cracking. The entire project, except for the back, is made from one 4x8 sheet of plywood. That's handy from a cost perspective, but in order to get all the pieces out of one sheet, we do have to be able to rip it down the 8 foot length first. So you're going to need some sort of a long straight edge, or something like this homemade circular saw track. The 8 foot strips from the sheet got cut down to a rough length using the miter saw. You could just as easily do this with the circ saw too. All my initial cuts were slightly oversized so I could clean things up on the table saw. The shelves need to be the thickness of the back material narrower than the sides so that the back can sit in the rabbit properly. The easy way to do that is just clamp a piece of the back material to the fence. There are dividers that separate the three horizontal shelves into six vertical compartments. These get cut from stock that was ripped to the same width as the shelf material. I cut the first one of these dividers to a line using the crosscut sled, then I used a stop block to make sure that all the rest of them come out exactly the same height, otherwise the shelves will go in there all cockeyed. Speaking of the shelves, they all need to be exactly the same length as well, but the crosscut sled isn't big enough to put the stop block on it directly, so I had to sort of jury rig this extension. There are two small pieces called battlements in the plans that are cut using the table saw fence. They're just decorative. And then finally, you can slide the fence in and cut the final piece, the width, which is the skirt that goes across the bottom of the front of the case. Once that skirt is cut, you can use it to set the fence after the dado blade is installed. The first shelf needs to go exactly the width of that skirt above the bottom of the case. The second shelf is the skirt plus the first shelf, plus another one of those dividers. So you can gang those three pieces together, stack them right up against the edge of the dado blade, and you'll be sure that this second dado is going to get cut exactly where it's supposed to be. You can lather, rinse, repeat this system for the third dado, although it does start to get unwieldy with all of those pieces and that distance from the fence, so your mileage may vary. I don't have enough table saw capacity to cut the very last dado using that same method, so I just used a divider piece to measure and mark the first one, but then I did set the fence so that I could cut both sides the exact same distance. The shelf may not be exactly where it's supposed to be, but at least it'll be straight. The two sides get a quarter inch rabbit to receive the back. I cut this on the router table because the dado stack was still in the table saw and I didn't feel like digging around for a sacrificial fence. Now, even when you're doing something simple like, you know, basic cabinet construction out of plywood, always, always, always do a dry fit because you will find out things that you don't want to find out once there's glue on it. For instance, you'll remember when I cut my shelf pieces to width, I used an actual piece of the back plywood in order to get them, you know, the right distance. Well, I didn't use that same piece of plywood to set the height of the rabbiting bit. So my depth here is a full quarter inch, and what I allowed for when I cut these shelves was the actual less than a quarter inch thickness. Uh, long story short, these things were just a smidge too wide. I put them in here, and they were, they were sticking up a 32nd of an inch into the rabbit. So because I'm doing a dry fit, that gave me the time to make a little mark, go back to the table saw, you know, take half of a kerf off of them, and now they're perfect. And also, if you have a sanding block with a real fine grid of paper on it, you can just knock the fuzzies off the ends of these plywood cuts. Uh, it keeps it from splitting the veneer out when you're going in and out of these dados a couple of times to do your test fits. All right, with it dry fit together, I'm gonna check it for square. We got 53 and a half this way, and it's 53 and 9 sixteenths the other way, uh, which is, Definitely close enough that when I get the glue on here, I'll be able to put a clamp across the corners and get it perfectly square. The case is held together with some screws while the glue dries. You have to pre-drill for those and it's a whole lot easier to do from the inside of the dados than from the outside of the case. I'm using plain old tight bond original yellow PVA glue. It's plenty strong and I don't expect to need any water resistance for this project. 
When assembling a case like this, I generally will put all of the shelves into one side and then lean it over and tap the other side on. And tap is going to be necessary because things swell, even in plywood, when you start putting glue on them. I finished drilling my pilot holes into the shelves using a combination bit that also countersinks the exterior plywood. This is pretty necessary because we're going to have to patch these screw holes with putty a little bit later. The sides and the dividers in this case have windows or pass-throughs that have a, an arched top in them. Uh, you can cut that with a jigsaw just fine. For a project like this, it'll work out. Uh, but I really want the tops of my windows to be perfectly round. So I'm going to cut them with the circle cutter on the drill press, and then I'll cut just the straight parts with the jigsaw. If I'd have had any sense, I would have done this before I glued this whole carcass together, but uh, fortunately, monster drill press to the rescue. Best piece of advice for a circle cutter is take your time. You only have one cutting edge, whereas a normal drill bit has two, and the bigger the diameter of the circle, the more material you're removing with each rotation. A little quick trick for you. I need to mark tangents down here so that I can cut the flat sides of this thing to make the little doorway. And getting the saw cut to come up exactly so that it's tangent to this circle is a little bit tricky. But it turns out, at least if you're going to use a band saw or maybe a Japanese saw, that the pencil lead that's in an automatic pencil is pretty darn close to the same as the saw kerf. So if you stick your pencil lead in here and then put a square against it and basically shove it up against here until you can't shove it anymore so that you have found the furthest point out of the circle and draw your line down from that. When you cut this with a saw, that will give you essentially a perfect tangent if your kerf is exactly the same as the pencil line and it'll only be off by the difference if it's not. If you're careful when you mark these things out, then they'll all be in exactly the same spot. And you'll be able to leave the bandsaw fence in one spot and cut all of your little archways at the same time. I wasn't quite that clever, so I had to adjust the fence individually for each of them. While we're at the bandsaw, I'm also going to hog away most of the material for these battlement decorations that go on the uh, front of the top. Even if I'd thought to do it ahead of time, I still would have had to use the jigsaw to cut out the windows and the sides of the carcass. You can set up straight edges for these pieces of the cut, but it really isn't necessary on a project like this. There's also a battlement detail on the tops of the sides. This one could have been cut out on the bandsaw if I'd thought to do it ahead of time, but it's easy enough with the jigsaw. We are making this for little kids, so you gotta make sure you get rid of all the splinters, sharp edges, anything that could hurt little fingers. Lots and lots of sanding is in order, and I took all of these divider pieces over to the router table and gave all the sharp edges a 1 8 inch round over. The shelf dividers aren't really a structural element, so you don't have to go crazy getting them in here. I put a little bit of glue on the top and bottom, and then applied just enough clamping pressure to make sure that they wouldn't slide around as I drove a couple of brad nails into the top and into the bottom. The most important thing really is just to make sure that you get them square in the case. Otherwise, they really kind of look funny when you look at them from the front. The battlement details just get glued onto the top front of the case, so I'm working on it here upside down. A couple of clamps will hold it in place while the glue dries. The skirt board gets glued and tacked underneath the bottom shelf in the front of the case. Mine was just a titch too wide. It was making the case sit kind of wobbly, but it wasn't wide enough that I could take it back to the table saw. Hand planes and plywood don't get along real well, but it worked out fine in my case. With the basic construction done, it's back to roundover duty. I busted out the trim router and I have that same 1 8 inch roundover bit and I'm just running around the inside and outside of the entire case, even around the tops of these battlements. I want to make absolutely sure that there just aren't any splinters or any sharp places that a kid could get a hold of. Well, a combination of plywood and screws and nail holes means one thing and that's filler. It's probably going to take two coats, I'm on the second coat right here because no matter what filler you get, it's going to shrink at just a little bit, and it might not look that bad once you've sanded it, but trust me, when you spray paint on it, those things will stick out like a sore thumb. Once the filler's dry, you can sand it back flush with the surface, and if done right, it'll disappear under a coat of primer. I'm using Kills White Latex to cover up this plywood completely. While the primer's drying on the case, I went to work on the drawbridge door. I've got a piece of material here that has not been thickness planed, so it's a sort of different thicknesses all along its length. I set a stop block for about an eighth of an inch shy of the height of the case opening because the door needs to be able to swing open. 
The edges of these pieces have to be nice and clean and straight in order to glue together well. That is a job for a hand plane if I ever saw one. And then glue and clamps. And it's a little bit odd with the pieces being different thicknesses, so you're going to need clamps top and bottom to keep it from wanting to twist and warp on you. I'm going to use magnets to hold the door of this thing closed, so I need some little pillow blocks that I can drill out with a Forstner bit, make enough room that I can epoxy a magnet in there. Once the epoxy sets, I can glue those blocks in place into the corners of the door opening. There are corresponding magnets in the two upper right corners of the door. You can set it in place and the magnets will stick tight, which is good because they'll hold it up off the base of the case. Drill some pilot holes through the sides of the thing and then drive some pins in through the sides of the case and into the door to serve as a hinge and to hold the bottom in place. The last piece that goes on is the back. It's pre-primed and I'm just tacking it down along the edges with some 23 gauge pins. Plenty strong even for this warped stuff. And so there you have it. One castle style bookcase complete with bridge. Well, all right, it's not really complete. Obviously the finish isn't finished. This is just the base coat of primer. It turns out my wife has a pretty good friend who is a graphic artist. And because this is a charity build, she has graciously agreed to do the final uh, painting and decor on this castle. So I'm going to have to post some pictures or another uh, follow-up vid or something later to show you the, the final result because this is as far as I am going to take it. Now while I used pretty much every tool I have in here, maybe except the jointer, it absolutely is not necessary. If you are even remotely thinking about this project but you're worried about the tooling, don't. A cirque saw and a jigsaw is all you need to successfully complete this case. Big shout out over to Mark and Nicole over at the Wood Whisperer for uh, going ahead with the woodworkers fighting cancer thing this year, even in the middle of a big move. Wish you guys luck. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, post them down below. I will uh, get to them as soon as I can. While you're down there, think about hitting those like and subscribe buttons. But above all, stay safe, YouTube.